Hello Kings and welcome to the four-year college application process brought to you by the Lake Washington High School Counseling Team. The four-year application process is complicated under any circumstance. However, with the recent COVID experience, it is even more complicated. We are going to go over all of the um, steps in the process and hopefully ease your worries and make this as seamless as possible. First of all, I want to start by introducing our counseling department and talking about our college and career center. The counseling department is made up of seven different counselors and is divided by alphabet of last names of students. You can find the email addresses for each of these counselors on the Lake Washington High School Counseling webpage. Our College and Career Center is headed up by Charlotte Henderson. She's a wealth of knowledge for students in supporting this college and career um, adventure. Her email is also listed on the Lake Washington High School Counseling website. I'm going to go through each grade and what students can do at each grade to prepare for the college application process, starting with our freshmen and our sophomores, moving on to our juniors, and finally our seniors. For our freshmen, what you can be doing right now to support the four-year college application process is maintaining your grades and rigors and courses. That would mean if you are a freshman and you did really, really well in a class um, or you feel really confident in a specific subject, maybe try your hand in an AP course or maybe an honors class. We also want you to start thinking about the college or career plans that you might have. Oftentimes students don't know exactly what they want to do, but they sure have an understanding of what they do not want to do. That's a great starting point. Sitting down and understanding what do I not want to do will narrow down what you might be curious about. You also could connect with Ms. Henderson from the College and Career Center. She has a wealth of knowledge and wealth of resources that are available to students that can really support this journey. Getting to know your counselor is a great, great idea. Uh, we can help you set goals and we can also help you manage and um, get an understanding of how to get towards those goals. We also want you to start building your resume. Your resume could be academic, but it could also be something where it's extracurricular or something that you do to support your community or something that you do to help support your family at home. Juniors. Our juniors will want to start thinking about taking their SAT. You want to start initially with checking the colleges that you might be interested in to see if they even require the SAT or the ACT. A lot of colleges now have changed their track and have decided that the SAT and ACT is not something that they're interested in having in order to grant you college admission. So check that before you invest a lot of time and money in the, in the um, tests. Juniors typically sign up for the SAT or the ACT in the late spring of their junior year um, into fall of their senior year. Similarly, you might be curious, do I need to take an SAT prep course? You can check out SAT or ACT prep courses at collegedward.org or at conanacademy.com for resources and whether or not this would be a good investment in your time and money. Juniors, we always all want you to maintain your grades and rigor of courses. You have to remember that this is the final year to improve your GPA before submitting transcripts to those colleges. So you really want your junior year to shine. You can start visiting colleges, college campuses to get a feel for what you're looking for. All schools now have virtual campus tours posted on their website, so visiting a college is actually really, really easy for anybody. Um, start looking at college campuses to see what you might be interested in. Are you, are you looking for an East Coast school? Are you looking for a West Coast school? Do you have no idea and you want to look at schools in the middle of the country or maybe internationally? Um, like I said, now it's easier than ever to do virtual college campuses. We want you to plan for your summer and your senior year. Perhaps you need to know what classes you still need for graduation. You can connect with your counselor about that. We're tracking your graduation at all times. 
Similarly, do you want to take any courses over the summer? Do you have classes that you need to make up for credit retrieval? Do you have enrichment opportunities that you want to participate in? You can start planning those for your senior into your senior year summer. For seniors, again, you need to determine whether or not you need to take the ACT or the SAT. Lots of schools have decided that that's no longer a requirement for them, so I really don't want you to invest the time and the money in something that you don't need. Once you have found this information out, perhaps your school requires it still, do you need to take it again? Are you feeling comfortable with your scores? Do you want to take, maybe you tried the SAT and you want to now try the ACT. Would you benefit from the test prep courses so you can check out collegebar.org or Khan Academy? Do you need to take a subject test? Some schools require specific subject tests, especially for um, intended degrees that might be like engineering or computer science or something in the math and science field. We also wanna be sure that you check out the schools you're applying for and really, really make sure they ensure it for admission. We have a lot of schools that have contacted us saying, hey, heads up, we are no longer requiring this. Please spread the word to your students. Uh, you'll wanna check those schools out just to make sure. We also want you to create your resume. Resume. Um, this is making a summary of all of your activities and all of the really great community things that you have done while in your high school career. Um, we want you to add everything on there and everything from your freshman until your senior year that you have done that has shaped or impacted the person that you are and you are becoming. Consolidate this into one summary and get organized. Finally, we want you to create a common app or a coalition um, account. <clears throat> I'll go over this more a little bit later, but the common app and coalition are online applications that service several colleges at once. Students create an account and they can apply through their online services. So several years ago, schools got together and said, hey, we're all asking for the same information. Perhaps we could all put this in one easy to use space. So the college app and coalition were created. Um, what you can do on this application is you fill out basic information and then when you apply for specific schools, they will ask for more specific information if that's what they're needing for their application to be complete. Um, be sure to only request supportive documents that are needed. A lot of schools will list several documents, lots of recommendations, lots of transcripts, lots of things, but they're actually not required. You wanna make sure that the school you're applying to requires those supportive documents. You also want to check with your teachers before you add them as, um, as somebody who is going to recommend for them. Um, teachers get a lot of recommendations and they flood their inbox, but you need to have a conversation beforehand and ask if the teacher has time and is willing to write that for you. Remember that counselor recommendation, recommendations are built into the Common App and Coalition application, so you don't need a specific one from your counselor. Ours is already included in your applications. Also, a, um, a heads up, Lake Washington School District does not rank our students. We no longer do that. Okay, so let's say that you took the SAT or ACT and you like your score, right? And, or maybe you're going to a school or you have applied to a school that doesn't require an SAT or an ACT, but you're now narrowing down your search. That's great. So we're gonna talk about your interests, location, can I get in? And then selecting. Starting with interests. We want you to investigate the schools that you're looking at. Make sure you know what majors are offered. You know, it seems kind of silly, but oftentimes we have students who are going to schools and the interest, um, the majors that they're interested in aren't even offered there. So we want to make sure that you're picking first and foremost, do they have what you already have interest in? Secondly, we have students who are curious about housing options. Is there a Greek system? Is there dorms? Is there off-campus housing? What does that look like so that you can make sure that those coincide with your interests? What clubs and sports and activities do they have? You know, do they have the intramural sports that you want to continue? If they don't, let's really consider finding a school that has those to support your um, outside interests. You need to have an outlet while at school and we need to make sure that that community can support your outlet. 
We also want to make sure that there's job opportunities. Oftentimes students end up staying in the same location that they, um, that they are educated. And if they are, let's make sure that there's job opportunities within that community that can support you. Um, next, we're going to look at location. You know, this is one of the biggest conversations that we have with students consistently is big versus small. Do you want a huge campus? Do you want a small campus? Do you want to live in um, rural areas or urban areas? Do you want to live close to home or out of state? Do you want to be in a warm climate or a cool climate? Or maybe something that has multiple seasons? Are you interested in international? All of these are really great questions when you're deciding your location. You'll be surprised when you think of just the quantity of colleges, camp, college campuses around the world this will easily narrow it down. If you decide of all of the college campuses, I really want a small campus. Well, great, that narrows it down. Okay, I really want a small campus that's in this city. Perfect, so you want a small urban campus. I really want to be in state. Okay, great, that keeps narrowing it down to smaller and smaller groups of colleges, making this task of finding where to apply even easier. Can I get in? That's a great question, right? Every single college campus on their websites, they have a minimum GPA requirement and a minimum SAT, ACT requirement for scores if they are taking them, okay? So that's a really, really great indicator of whether or not this is a good match for you. Can I get into this school? Are the core requirements that I took in college, do they match with the core requirements that this college is asking for? Also, are there other requirements like those subject tests that I mentioned earlier? Those are given through College Board. Do I need to do those subject tests? Do I need to make sure that I can get in? How do I bolster so that I make sure that this is still a viable option for me? Now, selecting colleges. We really want your college list to be narrowed down to four to seven schools. Anything more than that is really overwhelming for students. If you have more than seven schools, it's really hard to keep a track. And what that tells me is that you haven't really spent enough time in narrowing down where you'd like to be. Anything less than four is a little bit tricky also because we want to make sure that you have them in lots of different categories, that you have a safety school, which goes to my next bullet point, safety school, match school, and reach school. Now your safety school is a school that you will absolutely get into. Like you know without a doubt that that is your safety school. I will be going there or I can get in there. Your match school is I have looked at all of their requirements and I have looked at what I have and I bring to the table and they match together perfectly. The likelihood of being in that school is pretty high. We match good. And then a reach school is I look at their requirements and I look what I'm bringing to the table and I'm just a little bit outside that, just a little bit. So it's a little bit of a reach. We want you to have one school in each of those categories, but not going less than four and not exceeding seven. We also want to say select one college that's within your state. You never know at the end of the day, students get a little bit homesick and they get worried about leaving something that's so secure to them. So please make sure that you have at least one school in state that you're applying to. Also, you want to make sure that you're hitting those deadlines. Is it early action, early decision, regular admission? For a de definition of those terms, we go over here. Now, early decision is applying to one school by an earlier date. It's usually mid-November, and you hear the answer by December. But this acceptance is binding, and you must withdraw all other applications if you get into this school. Early action is you comply to more than one school, and the acceptance is non-binding, but it is an early application deadline. Now, rolling admissions is students will receive an answer within six to eight weeks after applying. Batch admissions is colleges, um, they wait for their, for their application deadline to be over. They usually make a decision by April. UW does this. Um, Western Undergraduate Exchange is also considered the WUI. It's attending participating out-of-state colleges for in-state tuition. Colleges are very, very good at advertising which schools. Similarly, we have the NCAA Clearinghouse. This is for student athletes. They must register to participate in intercollegiate athlete athletics for Division I and Division II schools. Okay, so you've narrowed it down. You now have your college picks between four and seven, right? Next, we're going to look at getting organized. Creating a common app, send it to your coalition profile requesting transcripts, letters of recommendation, 
essay selection, and SAT ACT scores, and then the final step, submission. We really want you to be organized. The biggest misstep that we see for college students or impending college students is 